Welcome to everyone to the session getting started with the NASA API and build a web app using satellite images and Earth observation data for the Space Apps Challenge 2020. Our goal is to share with the participants and Space Apps community an overview of the NASA APIs and how to access their data, such as satellite images, their instruments, models about climate, ocean, Earth temperature, the moon, the rover mission in Mars, and many other resources. So let's start. I am Leandro Camacho, the local lead of the Space Apps community in San Jose, Costa Rica. Go to the link of the GitHub repo that is in the description of this video. We're going to read about the demo that it's based on the official documentation of the NASA API. Once you're in, you can get started with the NASA APIs. You can find here the data sources and the libraries that we're using for this demo. You can also find the global competition challenges categories for the space apps competition of this year. The number one is observe, then inform, sustain, create, confront, connect, or invent your own challenge. In this workshop, we will learn more about using the API for the web and access data such as satellite imagery, Earth data observation, climate models, the moon, the rover mission in Mars, and many others. Let's start. The step number one is to create an account in the NASA Open APIs. Here, we're going to create our credentials and get access to your API key as a developer. You're gonna provide your name, last name, and email, and in case you already have your application URL, we're gonna put it here. And sign up for the service that is going to send you your credentials at your email provided. Once you receive the confirmation email with your API key, you're going to be able to access and use web services available on the network. As you can see, we're going to be able to access data such as astronomy, picture of the day, asteroids, space weather, Earth observation data, natural event tracker, Mars rover photos, satellites, the moon, and many other services. You're going to open the URL provided and make your first API call to NASA services. And as you can see, it returns a JSON response that include information such as a date, a description, and also image URLs that we can open. So let's take a look. Great, congratulations. You have made your first API call. Now, we're going to try the Earth Observation Data API where we can get information such as satellite images of a specific place and a specific date. This is provided by the latitude and longitude of the place. So I have a challenge for you. You're going to find the specific latitude and longitude of a place that you would like to study. For this, we're gonna use OpenStreetMap. As you can see here, you can search for any place that you would like to study specifically. We're gonna double click in the map and we're gonna tell to show the address. This is going to provide you an order part of latitude and longitude coordinates. We're gonna copy these values and let's add it to the Earth Observation API call that we have here. Now, we're going to open this URL. Remember that you need to change this API key. We're gonna come back to the first example that we were running and we're gonna change it because we already have here our credentials. We're gonna remove the demo key. And also, if you want to change the longitude and the latitude for a specific place, you can make it here. You can also change the date 
of the time that you want the Earth observation data, the satellite images, and you just make this call. As you can see, it returns the JSON file with a date, the satellite that is taking the picture, also the technical details, the resource, the service, and the URL with an image that we can open here. So we're gonna open this link. And as you can see here, it's gonna provide us the satellite image of a specific coordinate that we want to find. Congratulations for your second API call to NASA Web Services. Now we're going to make our last example of an API call for getting access to Mars rover photos gathered by Curiosity, Opportunity, and Spirit rovers on Mars. We're gonna copy this URL the same way we did it the last time. As you can see here, we already have our API key and we're gonna remove the demo key. Great, now we make the API call and as you can see, we can also change which rover we wanna take uh, the pictures from and also the earth date. As you can see here, it returns a JSON files with many details, the ID of the camera, the full name of the image source, uh, which is the mission. And as you can also see here, it comes with a lot of uh, photos and images that are taken by this Curiosity mission. So all these are pictures that you can use for either creating your model on mixed reality, virtual reality, machine learning, and many others. So as you can see here, we can take a look about some pictures that are taken by the Curiosity. Congratulations for your third API call of web services provided by NASA. Now it's time to move on with our web app demo using satellite images and Earth observation data. For this, we're going to follow the step number three. Welcome to the Global Imagery Browsing Service. This API is recommended for projects interested on building machine learning, mixed reality, and other models that are based on satellite images provided by missions such as Terra that it's located in the polar orbit and is synchronized with the sun. The step number four is to download the GitHub repo of our web demo. So go back to the code and download as a zip. Come here and download it. Great. With this project, you can learn more about visualizing layers of data of satellite images for uses, for example, of analysis and have a better understanding of climate events, advanced agriculture, oceans, and many other events and variables measured by the satellite instrument such as MADIS that tracks a wide range of vital signs of the Earth such as surface temperature, fire detection, the color of the ocean, the global vegetation and its changes, detection, characteristic of the clouds, aerosol concentrations, and many other variables and events. If you want to learn more about the instrument, the measurements, and which is the best layer for your project and for your use case, you can come and click here in the instrument and it's going to show you all the scientific details about the more than 900 GIPS products, the satellite missions, map libraries, among many others. For this demo, we're going to focus on the multiband imagery for getting satellite images that measures the vegetation density of a place. These image layers are going to be specific 
of your use case. So you need to define the most appropriate for your project. You can define the satellite, the platform that you want to get the data from, the instrument, the imagery layer, that it also comes with a uh, defined image resolution, the sensor resolution, the temporal range, and a very important aspect that you need to define is the band, because with this band, it measures and has a specific and scientific purpose. For example, the band 721, it measures the concentration and shows the concentration of chlorophyll pigments and bacteria in the ocean. The band 367 shows the composition of the different physical states that water can take, such as ice, snow, or liquid. Or for example, for our project, we're gonna use the band 121 that highlights the vegetation and shows the difference in type and density of a vegetation of a certain place. You can also take a look to other services such as science parameter visualizations of the atmosphere. All these parameters, you can look for the atmosphere, for the cryosphere, also you can get uh, all these values for the land. You can also extract uh, data and information, as you can see on this list, from the biosphere, from the ocean, human dimension, and many other utility layers. Now, you're going to open the zip file and get access to the folders. Once you do this, you can open it and see that it comes with an index HTML for our web page and the folder with the integrations to the GIPS API. Now you're going to open the index file and inspect the console error. As you can see, we had the error file not found. It doesn't found the main JS. For this, we're going to go back to the GitHub repo. As you can see here in the step number five, we have the main JS functions that are missing in our project with the parameters and variables such as the date, the view, the zoom of the image that we want to get, the layer, the format, the matrix, the tile, the region that is the lat long, the resolution, and others. So we're going to copy this function that we have over here, and we are going to take it and use it on our project. So for now you're going to create a new file in the GIPS folder, and for this, you can use your preferred code editor and create the missing functions in the main JS. So we're gonna come here into the folder, we're gonna add a new file, and we're gonna add the functions uh, from GitHub for our project. We're gonna create this main JS file. And as you can see here, we already created, and we're gonna get uh, the date, we're gonna create a map, with a specific resolution, the center, the zoom. You can also, uh, we're gonna update the image uh, based on the date parameter. We also are going to create uh, a layer of this image. So for this, we're gonna use the API from Earth Data NASA and we are going to use the band one to one that it's for the vegetation. Uh, it comes with this image format or the origin is the lat long that in this case is for Puerto Rico. And we're gonna also define the resolution of the image, the tail and the date and in a slider. 
So as you can see here, we're gonna save it. And now we're going to go back to the index file and we are going to open again. And as you can see now, we already have access to the satellite images with its vegetation layer for Puerto Rico on a specific date. So we can try here the different images for our lat long specifically. And we can now monitor the vegetation density for this specific place and get the data for training your models or creating different apps and services. Congratulations. Now let's try to change to another image layer about the state of the water. For this, we're gonna go back to the GIPS uh, documentation and in the multiband imagery, we're gonna pick the band 367, that this band measured the state of the water and we're gonna bring it to our main JS. So as you can see here, here we are defining the layer that we want to get the data from and we're gonna save it. So once you save it, we can come back to our project and upload and refresh our web. So as you can see, now it's extracting the data from this band and we can also change it in a range of dates. A big thing for being part of this session, you already got started with the NASA APIs about satellite images, Mars rover photos, Earth observation data, and many other resources. Now, I invite you all to create impactful solutions for your city, country, or the world. See you next time.